Okay, well, welcome everyone to our Simply Organic Beauty Salon Summer School. I really appreciate everyone taking their time out of your busy schedules to join us today as we gear up for this huge, successful webinar schedule we've got planned for you. We are eager to share a lot of ideas in these seven weeks that are going to help take your business to the next level, whether you're a suite owner, a salon owner, a stylist, any of the above or anything that has to do with our beauty industries. These are some successful salon tips that we've got going for you. So we're going to try to take you to the next level, and we always offer that here at Simply Organic Beauty. So like I said before, it's going to be seven weeks, seven classes over the summer schedule. I know a lot of us have some breathing time and some, some alone time where we take some time off for summer, but we wanted to make sure that we're all able to continue to make money, and we had some successful ideas that we wanted to share with you, and we have one big master plan that we want to make sure that by the end of this webinar schedule, over the course of these next few weeks, that you've got some tangible um, ideas that will take you to that next level for your salon business. So I'd like to introduce myself. Many of you I know, I've seen a lot of familiar people on our, our platform today. So I'd like to welcome all of you. I see a lot of my great education team out there. And my name's Rebecca Gregory, and I'm the Education and Technical Director for Simply Organic Beauty. Been here for over seven years now, and I've seen a lot of great changes go on within our um, industry. And I've also got Ashley along with me, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hello, everyone. I've met a couple of you in the past, but my name is Ashley. I'm the Marketing Director here at Simply Organic Beauty. Super excited. Uh, Honestly, helping small businesses and creative entrepreneurs uh, build their business and make a name for themselves is something I'm super passionate about. So I'm really excited to share with you all my marketing tips and tools and strategies. And I have a lot to share with you in the next couple of weeks. So thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you who don't know Rebecca or I or Simply Organic Beauty, I wanted to just tell you a little bit about our company, what we do, just so you know who you're taking advice from. So we've been serving the professional beauty industry for over 20 years. We introduced one of the first ammonia-free color lines in the United States. We're basically always constantly challenging um, the conventional norms of doing hair and business behind the chair. So us doing free, business, free trainings like this is uh, it's kind of in our wheelhouse. And I'm sure many of you were like, why is this free? Honestly, it's because we know this industry needs this type of education. So the master plan, we're going to help you grow and we're going to give you measurable um, opportunities here. We've got a lot of do's, a lot of don'ts, and a lot of things that you actually sh could share with us upon. So we do have the search, um, actually the question bar to, in your um, realm on the right hand side. So anytime we're doing webinars, feel free to kind of chat with us. We're going to do our best to answer all of your questions as we see them. I also have a team on, sta on staff here today that's going to help try to answer all those questions. And of course, by the end of it, this whole entire webinar platform is going to have some handouts and some extra advice that you can download. Um, so we're going to help you have these results measurable so that at the end of this, you know that you've gotten something big out of our, our experience together. Yes, exactly. So I want to go over our master plan. So there's really only four simple ways that you grow and optimize your business. And that's increasing your number of clients. So everything that we're doing in these next couple of weeks is going to be about attracting new clients and increasing our quantity of them. So today with uh, Salon Website 101, we're going to be talking about how we attract new clients to our website. Next week, we're going to be talking about hiring a master Google and Yelp reviews, which we all know can be a pain in our side. And then on week three, we'll be talking about social media. All of these are great topics to increase your number of clients. The second one is increasing your average transaction. So this is about boosting your client values. And I believe it will be on week six that we'll be talking about how you can increase your ticket amount with upsells and retail sales and even visual merchandising. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And then next, the way to grow your business is to increase your purchase frequency. So this is more about retaining your clients. As fun as it is to get new clients, 
If you're not retaining your current ones, then you have a problem. So during client love and loyalty class, we'll be talking about all exciting things to retain your clients. And social media also plays a little bit of a, a hand in that. So you're t always staying top of the mind. And then the final step of growing your business is honestly increasing your efficiency. And this is about working smarter, not harder, with systems that scale and optimizing things like tax write-offs and your hiring and training systems. And that'll be a little bit towards the end of Salon Summer School. So you'll, you'll notice the last one here is Salon Suite Week. I think that uh, class will be good for everyone, not just Salon Suite owners. That's when we're going to get into tax write-offs, uh, optimization, and all sorts of fun things. So make sure you stay tuned for the entire seven weeks. All right, so I know you guys are here to see how to build some awesome websites, so let's get started. Yeah, that's me pointing at the lovely Salon Website 101 class sign. So my, what I'm really gonna focus on here are the do's and don'ts of a successful website. And then at the very end, we're gonna be covering my five money-making features of a Salon website. And if you just walk away with one of those today, I promise your business will skyrocket. So to, to keep it completely simple, I put four elements of a successful salon website. This is gonna be your contact points. At a, as a local business, your contact points are so much more important than businesses like ours, where it's only contact forms and slight emails. You guys really have to focus on your call to actions. And a call to action is when you're asking someone on your website to take an action, like signing up for your newsletter, booking an appointment, booking a consultation, calling you, uh, going to your actual business with foot traffic. Um, so contact points, extremely important. And then the second successful element of a salon website are your costs. Um, I've seen a couple of salon websites lately that just didn't even show their pricing. I think this sends a bad message. What, what do most of us think when we don't see pricing? We think, oh, that's out of my price range. I can't afford that. I'm not going to book an appointment today. I'm not going to even bother to call. So we're going to be talking about simple strategies and how you can really showcase your pricing and even set yourself up for some nice upsells. The third C over here is culture. Your salon website really needs to show your salon culture. This is your personality, your brand, your values. Uh, as Simply Organic Beauty, a lot of you are our customers. And you know we have a strong value system behind our brands, eco-friendly, organic, non-toxic. You don't have to be here to, and have to use our products to show your culture. You can have a totally different value system, but being able to convey who you are and what you stand for is so incredibly important to standing out and attracting the exact client that you want. Uh, the next and final part of it is content. Now, we're going to be talking about all different ways that you're going to optimize your images, videos in a way that is cohesive, and blogging, which is going to be super important for you guys. So those are the four successful um, elements of a salon website, and we're going to dive into those a little further now with some do's and don'ts. All right, do's. Do have an easy and readable navigation menu. I can't tell you how many times I've been on a website and I can't even know where to go next because the navigation menu is a crazy color, is out of line, or just doesn't serve me and where I need to go. Um, on the don't side of that is please make sure your website and especially your navigation menu is uh, mobile friendly. And I'm going to show you something really quick here on how you can test mobile optimization right in your browser. So here... We have Sam Wong Salon. Look at this awesome navigation bar. So clean. I know exactly where I need to go. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to test. So this is basically what I did here. I minimized my window. And watch as I zoom out, the navigation comes out. And when I come in, look, it all went under a menu. That's a nice, mobily optimized website. All the pictures stay good. All the titles stay unstretched and readable. So this is extremely important. So and another do of these contact points is I'm a big, big fan of having your location, phone number, and even a contact form right on the homepage. We're on Sam Wong's homepage right now. 
So let me just get out of mobile mode here. I love that I can email them right away. I love that I can call them. I know exactly where they're located. I even know their hours. I think that's extremely important. And then what I think I love most about this site is their call to action up here, this little sticky bar, and it's telling me to call or make an appointment and make an appointment online. I think this is something that if you're not if your business isn't doing today, you need to do it. Sam Wong has it in two areas here, and I just think it's so incredibly important. So I'm going to zoom out here real quick and go back to a little bit of the do's and don'ts of the contact side. So we, ooh, we skipped ahead and gave you guys a little bit too much information. Okay, so another thing I like on that homepage, rather than the location, phone number, and contact information, is again, to have some kind of call to action. So that little black bar we saw above Sam Wong Salon, that was a really nice call to action. That was clean. I knew exactly what I needed to do. And what I'm gonna tell you guys to do today for your forms and if you decide to integrate online booking is please, please test these things. Um, during this whole presentation, uh, I was actually going to a bunch of different salon websites and trying to go through the whole online booking. And I can't tell you how many people it was actually broken, the feature. I like, I was shocked. I think it was at least 60% of salon sites that had an online booking feature. It didn't work. And that's not the message you want to send or possibly a new client. One, they may not book, and two, they just might give up altogether and not even consider your business again. So make sure you're always testing your integrations, whether it's online booking or just your contact forms. And please, please always check your email, especially if it's something that you have front and center. So the lovely Sam Wong Salon, one more time. So then we're gonna be moving on to cost. This is the pricing part that I was telling you guys about. Um, again, be upfront about your pricing. I think that's extremely important and to have simple pricing. I'm not a huge fan of doing pricing ranges because I feel if you ever run into a situation like a color correction or anything like that, it's going to set you up to fail and your client's going to be dissatisfied. And I have an example for you here. It's a lovely evergreen salon and barbering co. They are super simple with their services, clean prices, and if it looks like something like hair color where it can have such a crazy range, they do the plus. I love just having the nice plus there, gives you a nice cushion, so you're just not under this pressure to stay in a range. Um, while we're here though, let's go back because did you guys see that call to action? Did you see their lovely uh, book your appointment on the homepage? Very nice, right? Oh, this does it now. Awesome. And again, see, they they know what was up. I love it. And then again, on their contact page, it's completely filled out. Yes. And then Rebecca has some awesome things to share with you about the pricing as well. So visiting a new salon or spa can be quite intimidating to a first-time guest. So that's obviously why a lot of us go online now. We have that option to, you know, Google what's in our area. We're looking for something that fits our culture, such as an eco-friendly, um, PETA certified type of organic culture. So, you know, like she mentioned, looking for the culture, having it firsthand so that all the imagery, you know, she's going to get into, you know, responds to that. However, as we know, I, I was told a long time ago, when people go into a salon for the first time, and it can be so, um, difficult because, you know, they don't know anybody in there necessarily. They may have even come in on as a referral, but once again, it's like going to a party and only knowing the host of this, of the party. And it's quite, um, it can be a hard, hard to approach that. So, and many people haven't even ever gotten their hair professionally done, but this is something they're looking to do. Maybe they need to get a healthier beauty product and they found you, um, in part of that movement. So perhaps that's what it is. But if they are seeing, if they don't know the pricing or, you know, even where it says the plus that Ashley mentioned there, they may never come in because it's quite, it, it's, it's just scary. So by having that option, they know, okay, that's in my range. I'll at least go in for a consultation. They'll book a consultation and, um, 
So it's something that if we do put our pricing, I know a lot of us are like, we'll come in for a consultation and that's all we do for pricing. But if you do give the range where it's starting at and you have some movement up from there, then um, at least they aren't so scared to come in and book that appointment with you. So that was my input there. Yeah, extremely important client expectations and managing them. That's why I also love, which was on my do's and don'ts checklist, is if you have any policies in place, it's I think it's important to have that right on your pricing page. And that's exactly what Evergreen did here. View our policies. I won't get into their policies, but I think that's extremely important. If you're going to hold them accountable for anything, price-wise, return-wise, refund-wise, it's really nice to have it clear and right on your website. So extremely important. And again, I love how clean and easy to understand these price these pricings are and benefits like bang bang trends always complimentary awesome so yeah yeah good job evergreen so we're gonna get on to our next do's and don'ts all right probably your favorite is salon culture so I can't tell you how many salon websites that I've been to that have the same stock photos. I, not that they're bad, but I just don't get a feeling of who you are when I go to them or what you can do and what your team is about. So dues, have unique and professional looking photos. You guys saw Evergreen. They had some lovely photos of them and their salon. It was great. And then, of course, I have another example for you. So this is Bigsby House, and I love how you can either enter their site or book now. We are very into the call to actions. Love it. So right when you get to Bigsby's website, you, you already see what this salon is like, what it looks like, what it feels like, what they're about. Um, again, their pricing and services, clean, easy to see. It has the plus right there, not a range. I mean, it's a really gorgeous space, and they've done a beautiful job capturing that by not using stock photos and by bringing their own taste and flavor. Um, I love how they have their stylus featured here. Um, it's even cooler when you click, you go right to the stylus Instagram, so you get a feel of what their style is. I think that's pretty cool, Bigsby. And it's super cohesive and on brand. And you can just tell how cool, edgy, and fashion forward they are. And they, I just, personally, I'd be very attracted to someone like this and to have a nice, like, creative, clean, minimal artist do my hair. So they clearly have a target market in mind, and it's just very well done. And ooh, look at that. Some kind of call to action, a contact form right on the homepage. Always a plus. So very on-brand website, no generic stock photos of girls with overly shiny hair that doesn't even look natural. Um, it's all perfect, and I get a lovely idea of what they stand for. So again, just a couple of the don'ts real quick. So don't forget about your, uh, custom, your customer and who you're trying to attract. Don't forget to try to keep your branding cohesive. Like whatever colors you're using in salon, it'd be great if those could transfer to your website. Not 100% necessary, but the more cohesive identity that you can bring to the table, the more people are going to remember you, they're going to expect greatness from you. And I, again, I just think it's the ultimate customer experience if your website can be a reflection of how you are in the salon and as a business owner. Again, a little snapshot of Bigsby and their staff. And finally is content. Um, I think it's extremely important to have diverse sets of content on your site. Um, testimonials, important content type. I think images such as transformations and a portfolio are huge. Um, keeping your content up to date. We talked about keeping your pricing up to date, but I think honestly keeping your work up to date is just as important. We all know how trends are so fleeting. And it's important to show all the different things that you can do and what you offer. Um, blogging, we're going to get to that more in a little bit, but it's so very important. And it's another content type, especially as a local business. I mean, 
it's so important that I think you blog about local events and accomplishments and what you're doing in the community because in history, salons and stylists, you guys have always been community leaders and your blog is a perfect place to show that, whether you're doing a park cleanup, a cut-a-thon or, or anything or have a new stylist on staff, your, your blog is a beautiful place to, like again, let your cultures and your value on what makes you different show. Um, and again, I think really the four minimum pages any salon site should have is an about page, contact page, services page with prices, and bonus points if you have a product page, because then people really get to know what you're all about and uh, evergreen at a whole product section of their site. Um, don'ts. Uh, don't forget to try to update your site. If you're not a blogger, you're not a writer, I understand that. There's all different types of creatives out there. But just try once a quarter, once every three months. Sit down, make sure your pricing's up to date. Make sure all your integrations, your online booking, your forms, your email, make sure it's all working. Um, and don't ever underestimate, again, the power of your blog in keeping all those things kosher. So this is just a little example of Milk and Honey Salon in Austin, Texas, and how they not only write about local things, but they also give their clients little tips. 11 clean beauty products, swap for the summer, very cool. And if you'll notice at the bottom, they don't have a contact form. It's actually underneath this. They have a newsletter sign up, and that's going to gateway right into our next topic, which is our five must-have money-making salon features. So this is by far my favorite part. I could talk all day about web design and platforms and what to do and not to do, but these are definitely things you should do. Like I said, if you can come out with just one of these today, your salon will thank you. So newsletter opt-in. Money-maker number one. This may be not something you see a return on right away, but what you're doing is you're building your email list. So back to Milk and Honey and how they have a subscribe button right here. There's a, another salon that has a great way to capture emails for your list. This is Sweet Magnolia. They have this cute little pop-up that asks people to join their email list so they can know about new products, deals, and Sweet Magnolia happenings. I don't know what that is, but it sounds really enticing. So the benefits of building this email list is that you own it, whereas when you're building all of your client appreciation on Facebook and Instagram, one day Instagram and Facebook could just decide not to show your content anymore and you'd be put in quite a pickle. So having this email list, which should also include your customers, is extremely important. It's a targeted list of people that have bought from you before and people who have opted in and may buy from you in the future. It doesn't get more targeted than that. I can't tell you how many times I see people like, oh, I have an opening on Friday. Would anyone want it? And they're just hoping that people are on their Facebooks looking, but a lot of the times people aren't. So it wouldn't be bad if you shot them a quick deal if anyone wanted to take that last spot on Friday, or if you're looking for a hair model, or you're doing any type of event. Keeping this email list up to date is extremely important, and not just to make money and get people to book appointments, but it's a relationship builder. This is an opportunity for you to really make a connection with your people. Um, Whereas social media, you're kind of just throwing this message out there. And although people can respond, it's not quite as personal as getting a little love letter in your email. It could just be something nice like happy holidays. And then keeping up with this email list is pretty low cost. I'm going to show you some of my favorite tools. And I know a lot of salon software management and booking systems may have similar type offerings, but this is kind of outside of that. Yes, again, don't forget to add your clients to that list. So two of my favorites for small creative businesses are MailChimp and Constant Contact. They have really nice templates that are easy to work with. Um, mo I think they're both free to start. Once you start growing your email list, they get a little more expensive, but nothing unaffordable. Um, again, they're simple and easy. And they have nice little segmentation uh, strategies too. So you can keep your customers and the people opting in on your website separate because your messaging for them may change. 
money maker number two, I think I already spoke about this a bunch, but I'm going to say it again. Online booking, I can't tell you how effective this has been for even people I know personally. So I have a case study for you. Um, Alfie's Barbershop in here in Florida. So prior to this training, I had him add this online booking to the very top of his website. And within eight to 10 weeks, I'm sorry, he got eight to 10 new clients a week from it. And this was just based off his current traffic, did nothing, except of course, make sure it works. And it, it was a pretty amazing result for not much cost. Um, so here's some suggested online booking apps. Um, a lot of you use Vagaro. Um, Square, uh, Square Up is a nice one if, to book an appointment online, especially since I know a lot of you use them as your point of sale system in the salon. Uh, Schedulosity, I don't even know how to pronounce that one, but it's another popular tool as I've come to find in my research. And then Style C. Um, I really heard this is a good one for booth runners and a lot of individual stylists. And it's kind of nice because you can take your profile with you no matter where so what salon you go to. So, so I put style seed up there. And then moneymaker number three, photos of your work. I know you guys probably won't believe me on this one, but so many websites I've been to, again, it's stock photos or pictures of the salon, but I'm not seeing your work which is incredible because I mean, the services you all provide for people are just one of a kind. And if I'm not seeing what you personally do or what your salon offers, then I think you're missing out on a big opportunity there. It's almost like a plastic surgeon. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust someone to give me some kind of facelift unless I saw what they can do. So there's some examples, some easy ways to keep your profile and your photos up to date on your website. Um, embedding your Instagram profile right on your website is a really, really easy thing. Whether you're using WordPress, Squarespace, Wix, um, it's super easy to do. I'm going to show you how to do that next. And then if you don't want to embed your Instagram, you don't really keep up with it, just having a nice portfolio or gallery page can go a long way. Um, I was showing you that wedding site um, earlier, and I think when you do services like wedding and makeup, it's even more important to have a portfolio or a gallery page. And then my final example is transformation photos. I think those are extremely important. So again, Instagram, this is an Instagram profile embedded on East Coast Salon's website. It's kind of nice. You don't have to keep up with it. As long as you post on Instagram, it updates. There's Sweet Magnolia, the wedding. As you can tell when you're doing wedding and makeup again, I think it's a lot more important to have more professional photos, but don't underestimate the real deal. So here's some transformation photos. If you offer things like biodynamic scalp treatments for hair loss and things like that, and you're looking to really start to open up that side of your business, I think it's important to have real testimonials on there. Um, this one on the left is from Bailey. Uh, one of our educators using our OA scalp treatments. Very cool. And then this was just, I believe this was actually a color correction that just turned out really beautiful. So although it's not these flashy stock photo type images, I think transformations are where it's at. So number four, gift cards available online. I think this one is so underestimated and I only see a, like a lot of big salons doing it. But I think it's something even like little solo suites could take advantage of too. Here's a, another example from Milk and Honey. And this was built into their salon software system. I think it's called Secure Booker. But it's pretty cool. You can buy a gift certificate online or have one mailed. And I also have some cool tools for you later on how to do that. So gift card benefits. Instant revenue, guys. If anyone's looking for a gift for their wife or their sister or their mother, it's just something you instantly get paid for. I, I mean, I hope they come in and use it, obviously, but it's just really nice. Uh, it's a great referral booster. It's a great way to get a new client. It increases loyalty. So instead of offering a discount on your services, why not give them a gift card? Because two out of three consumers spend 40% more than on the card value. 
and also make sure they keep coming back to you, increasing that loyalty. So if your salon software doesn't offer that, um, I found these two really cool services called Gifly and Yifty. And they're just easy ways for you to offer uh, digital gift cards. And number five, uh, testimonials. I'm going to let Rebecca finish this one here because I think she has a lot of experience as a salon owner and educator with testimonials. So testimonials are obviously a big source of um, loyalty to it because anybody that comes into your salon that you hear, oh my gosh, I love my hair. Or they're crying in the chair because they're so excited of their new look. You know, basically one way of doing that is making sure that your salon coordinator or your manager, whoever's checking them out, asks for this. So, hey, did you like your hair today? I know that you keep bragging about it. Would you do us a favor and go ahead and and give them you know, the opportunity to give that testimonial online for you. Um, I've done everything from giving gift cards or for or value to their next service for making sure that they go online, but having maybe a cute little signage up there with all of the the icons or the logos there for Facebook, for Instagram, and all the opportunities, Yelp, and so forth. Um, just last week, we had one of our stylists actually get a referral from a Yelp review. And so they definitely generate multiple um, opportunities for additional income throughout the year. So as you're looking for built um, building that customer base or replacing people that have moved and you want to get some new blood going on in your salon, this is a great way. Another way for testimonials that they've worked for me is um, working with your real estate agents or somebody that's going to have a lot of opportunities to share their testimonial to people that are moving into the area or whatnot. So um, anytime you can link that to them, that is a great opportunity for you. Or if they're maybe selling a house to a high-end new um, person that just moved into the area, you know, helping them um, have their testimonial, you know, on your website as well. And that'll help to get some of their clients coming to you as well. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, what I think is super important about having testimonials on your salon website is it prevents them from leaving and going to third-party sites like Google and Yelp. And I'm sure your, your reviews are great there too, but the moment they leave their site, there's probably some crazy cat video that's going to pop up and distract them. And then they're not going to do what you want them to do, whether it's call, book an appointment online, fill out that form. So I think it's important to have your reviews right on your site, even a couple and I also, I don't know if it's just me, but I like seeing a face to these reviews. I couldn't even find a salon that had attributed someone's face. Maybe their client just didn't want their face on there. Makes perfect sense. But, uh, but here was another salon website, Salon Serendipity, that had her testimonials right on her page. And I love how they're right next to the book now button. Oh, and she has gift certificates. Good job. So again, I think having those testimonials right on your salon website gives them all the information they need to know right there. They don't have to seek it elsewhere. They don't have to ask their mom, their cousin. And that really leads us into next week when we're going to be talking about reviews and rankings a little further. Kind of just give you a little teaser today about having reviews and testimonials on your site. But we all know that Yelp reviews, Google reviews, Facebook reviews, they can kind of make or break our business. And we have some great strategies that Rebecca already alluded to about how to kind of generate some of these reviews and authentic testimonials organically. So please tune in next week because I think this is a really important topic that a lot of us overlook and how all these things really go back to Google and your search rankings. And now that you kind of understand the salon website a little better, better. We're going to be optimizing it a lot next week through rankings and reviews. So thank you for joining us. And if you have questions or comments, please leave them in the chat because what we're going to do is we're going to export all these questions at the end of the training and send you out an FAQ. So you had to leave early or someone couldn't make it. We're going to answer all your questions that we weren't able to see live. So please, please leave them on there. Um, I would love to discuss anything about your website with you. It's one of my personal passions. So leave your questions in the question box. And I'm going to have Rebecca finish us off here. 
So we're just building this content together. So this entire book that we're putting on for summer school, I think will certainly help you. It's helping me. It's very interesting to learn more and grow more together. So thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to continue through summer with you. And uh, I appreciate your time. Thanks, guys. So we'll see you next Monday for rankings and reviews. We're going to leave the screen up a little longer just in case a question pops up that you're not able to think of right now. So again, just leave it in the question section and we're going to get to all of them soon. And this webinar will be available for replay in 24 hours along with that FAQ. So again, thanks for joining us and we will see you next Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for rankings and reviews. Thanks.